Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this edition. Back in the studio, uh, taking a break between a couple of car reviews. Thanks for taking the time to join me. I appreciate it. Today's story, I'm going to talk about Volkswagen. They recently came out and presented their strategy till 2020. Seems like all the OEMs now, I talked about GM and Stellantis and Ford and a bunch of others. Well, they're all coming out with their updated plans now for this decade, which is good. So let me get right into it. Now, Volkswagen's strategy uh, is called their new auto. And as I said at the opening, it takes it out for the rest of this decade. Now, Volkswagen, of course, as you folks know, if you follow me, I've talked about them many times. They've had many announcements about their electrification strategy over the last few years since I've been following the market. And this one was no exception. I think what they've done is they followed up with a lot of the other OEMs are doing. They're presenting a plan that has some financial fiscal fiscal feasibility into it as well as their strategy for where they're going to deploy their electrification efforts throughout the globe for this decade and again that presentation was called new auto now at the core of this strategy is the shift to electromobility and the gradual phasing out of the combustion engine but it goes far beyond electrifying the hardware that has been dominant for so long it has already been very clear for a while now that Volkswagen's future is electric, as I've said. With the development of the MEB platform over the last couple of years and the recent power day that they did in March, it was clear where VW was going. They will soon be one of the largest battery users worldwide, having defined their own cell format they call the unit cell. The CEO, Mr. Dees, and his top management gave insights into how this change of the group is to take place. So they used the term reinvention, and that came up with quite some frequency. The Volkswagen strategy is called New Auto because, as Dies insists, the automobile will remain and individual transport will remain the most important means of transport until 2030. Well, I feel it goes beyond 2030, but we'll take it from there. So how is Volkswagen's reinvention going to happen? Well, according to them, it needs software, batteries, of course, and digital services. And that's a theme that we're hearing from many OEMs now is on more, uh, adding more digital services. Well, there's money in it, so why not? Now, when we talk about battery cells, the production that they announced at Power Day should help increase the group's value creation in electric mobility. Now, VW is going to have six European battery gigafactories, which will produce unit battery cells for their own use. And the second point for industries change, according to them, is software and brand differentiation. And that's going to come much more from the software and services that VW offers. And they also announced the de facto end of the two electric platforms that they have, the MEB and the PPE. Even before the first PPE model, the electric Porsche Macan, is even launched on the market. Now, VW is developing a single group platform to replace this, and they call that the Scalable Systems Platform, or SSP for short. Now, the first vehicle is to be based on the SSP starting in 2026, and from then on, all important future models are to be based on this platform. From 85 to 580 kilowatts of power output for all models and brands. Regarding SSP, it will be based on an 800 volt flex system, and by 2030, the SSP is expected to reach more volume than MEB and PPE would have combined. Over 40 million vehicles are to be built over the platform's lifetime. And this shows that the economies of scale that Volkswagen expects will be enormous. And of course, as we all know, if you can achieve economies of scale, you can achieve quicker production and lower prices to the consumer. At least I hope so on that last one. Now, these economies of scales are to be made possible by a modular concept. And everybody, you've heard me when I've talked about the other OEMs, they're all doing the same thing, going into very modular concepts to order in order to lower the price point and make it easier to build. 
So that's why the SSP consists of standardized modules that can be combined within certain specifications. Now the combination of these modules and predefined platform sizes should reduce complexity by 50%. And remember folks, if you hear terms like reduce complexity, it should equal reduce price to the consumer. But let's wait and see. Now Volkswagen has done an 800 million euro investment in a new development center and that's going to help bring the SSP to reality. VW expects the market for combustion engines to shrink by 20 to 30 percent in the near future as electric cars will already catch up with combustion engines in terms of profit margins in two to three years. So that's interesting that they're talking about um, uh, profit margins in such a short time with the investments that they've made already. And I think that that's probably fair. I don't see this market as some people are predicting, you know, converting to maybe 50 or 60 or 70 percent all electrics by the end of this decade. I'm not sure if we're going to hit that mark. It's a big marketplace, folks. 80 million um, autos a year, light duty vehicles a year globally. And, you know, we're only selling about three to four million EVs. Even if we hit five this year, we're still well, well below any large numbers. But it is possible for sure. Now, VW also has increased the original range for their operating return on sales from seven to eight percent to now eight to nine percent. And they expect that by 2030, as I mentioned, sales of electric cars for them will exceed those of combustion cars. I'm quite confident in that since VW is lowering the amount of combustion vehicles they will start building this uh, by the end of the decade and increasing the number of EVs. So it makes perfect sense. Now VW also announced more investments in software, mobility services, and in the commercial sector. Additionally, they expect to provide level four automation this decade. In order to satisfy the EV growth, the company must also tackle another challenge. And as we all know, charging the electric cars is critical. So to this end, Volkswagen intends to further expand the public charging infrastructure in Asia, Europe, and America. And when they say America, they mean North America. Electrify America slash Canada is to almost double its current charging infrastructure in the USA and Canada to a total of 1,800 fast charging stations and 10,000 installed charging points by mid-decade alone. The planned expansion will lead to the expanded use of 150 and 350 kilowatt charging points. In Europe, Volkswagen has also agreed to a new joint venture with a company called Enel X to build a nationwide HPC network in Italy with more than 3,000 charging points of up to 350 kilowatts each. So when you look at some of those numbers, in total, the Volkswagen Group plans to build 18,000 HPC charging points in Europe, 17,000 in China, and 10,000, as I mentioned, in the USA and Canada. Dies closed off the meeting by saying that the automobile and individual mobility has a bright future. With VW's innovative brands and state-of-the-art technology platforms, they are preparing to play a leading role in the new mobility world. So I think what I've heard here from VW in these summaries is that certainly this is the case. And as you folks know, I love it, love it when OEMs like VW and the others that I've been reporting on and following on have uh, future plans that are very heavy with electrification and that also coordinate with the reality of running a business. Okay, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Just my shorter show focusing on Volkswagen's EV plans for this decade. Thanks a lot for tuning in, watching on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thank you for those who do. And I always love to read comments and enjoy feedback. So please don't hesitate to put that in YouTube in the comments. And of course, my humble thanks to Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much for that. It's always appreciated um, to see your support and to get your support. If you're interested, you can check the link below, get more information on supporting me on Patreon as I continue my efforts in watching and looking at the electrification landscape. And with my agenda of 
um, you know, trying to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. I have to look at my logo. It's been a while since I've said that. Uh, I know. And that really is the core to who I am, folks. So if you're, this is the first time you're watching me, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And hope, again, you'll, you'll consider subscribing. And until the next episode, please, everybody, continue to stay safe. Lots of things going on that we still need to be concerned about. So watch that. Watch the EV landscape. And I'll be back with more car reviews and more episodes for the future. So until then, thank you very much. And I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.